Good morning, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita. Um, it is a beautiful Sunday, Friday morning and I am waking up. <laughs> so top of the morning to all of you. I have a lovely iced coffee here that I'm going to be nursing as we go. I've got a lot of candle reviews that I still need to do for July and some for August, um, but we need to really get this Bath & Body Works haul done, um, sealed, signed, and delivered. So today I have the third part of what I believe is the third the second wave of fall candles coming in August. I thought they were coming in August, but then I saw some um, promotional materials from the back office that indicated that you might be seeing all of these candles next week, like at the very end of July. So be looking for them because they may very well be coming out sooner rather than later. So this third video here is about, I thought it was just five candles, but then when I reviewed my notes, it's actually eight candles. These are your cheaper $24.95 candles. I went ahead and bought one of them. This is a Praline Delight. And as you can see, it's the cheaper because um, it's got this colored wax. It doesn't have the full wraparound label or any kind of texture. They usually have just some sort of label in the front. This one is clear so you can see the um, colored wax through it. Um, often I like the cheaper $24.95 ones, not just for the price. I tend to like them sometimes because if they've got a really nice label, I love seeing the colored wax. I think honestly, that's like 80% of your design strategy or choice just to have a lovely colored wax come through. Um, so I sometimes really like these. Now, sometimes the labels are like really cheap or phoned in. I am so happy to say that I love this aesthetic secretly and privately. Well, it's not secret because I'm just saying it. Privately, this is probably my favorite label and my favorite aesthetic choice that I have seen from Bath & Body Works from this early fall period. And I know the bar is very low and there's not a whole lot to compare it to. Um, but I am really happy with this. There's something about the font choice and about the colors and the, um, what do we call these? We, we, we're gonna just call them little pictures. They're like a painted, uh, I don't know, like painting kind of effect. There's something about them that feels very vintage to me. So I'm calling them vintage fall. And I'm also calling them vintage woodland fall because many of the design graphics that they've chosen here are of leaves and mushrooms and nuts and flowers, etc., that just look very forest and woodland authentic. Um, very earthy, very muted, and I really like it. There is something also that seems like kind of rich vintage tapestry-like, like something that you would see in like an old wallpaper or various other kind of um, illustrated um, designs in books or whatever from like maybe a half century ago or a little bit more. So I really like it. This candle is a little bit hard to see it because unfortunately they have matched a very dark brown wax with also a photo that is on the dark side. It does allow the name to really pop with the white, but this is actually one of the harder ones to appreciate, I think. Many of the other ones that have lighter wax or lighter um, designs pop even more. So let's talk about them. There are only, I think, two new fragrances from this eight candle collection. Most of the rest of them will be very familiar to you. This, I believe, is one of the new ones. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we're seeing Praline Delight for the first time. That said, it's not exactly an innovative fragrance, and it's going to be very similar to a whole range of candles that we have seen from Bath & Body Works over the years and will continue to see and are in fact on the floor currently. So nothing to really write home about, but I did pick it up 
because I liked it, which is amazing considering the fact that I do not do gourmands. And I do think this is probably solidly in the gourmand category. We will get to this in a second. Let's talk about some of the other candles first. And I'm gonna start with the ones that I think are the most evocative or the most stunning. So let's start out with this one. This is Autumn Chai. So Autumn Chai is familiar to everyone. It's been around for a while, but how beautiful is this label? You've got this beautiful like golden milk or warm milky color um, wax. And then the design here, you can pick out the cinnamon sticks, the clove, the star anise. It has various leaves and flowers. And look at the beautiful choice of having those dark leaves background the white font so that it like really, really pops. I just think this is a stunning and perfectly apropos label for a candle that is named Autumn Chai. And Autumn Chai doesn't as I said, need a whole lot of description because many of you will be familiar with this candle. Um, I wasn't terribly impressed with it and I've not been. I've never bought it, I've never burned it, but for me, it's not particularly spicy. It's not spicy enough for it to feel like a true chai candle for me. And as I've said before, the white pumpkin one actually feels a little bit more bitey to me with the appropriate spices and feels a little bit more chai-like. So I actually don't think that the fragrance is that impressive, but my gosh, this package is beautiful. I really love it. Okay, so let's go to another one, which again, should need no introduction, and that is Blueberry Maple Pancakes. Oh my gosh, I give this one the award for probably the most stunning of the eight. It is so beautiful. Look at this beautiful dark blueberry color wax. And then the sprigs of the blueberry, the light leaves that just really brighten up the entire candle, which is a better choice than what we see in the Praline Delight, where we have a fairly dark wax and they have contrasted it with a lighter design to really allow um, the design to come forward in the way that it does. It's just really stunning. And they have, of course, these pictures of pumpkins, uh, not pumpkins, of pancakes over to the side. Um, but for some reason, they don't cheapen the hole as you would think that they would. They still kind of fit within that like vintage tapestry kind of design. Um, and I'm just really, really loving this look. Many of you are familiar with this candle, so we won't need to talk about it. It is not for me. And I wish that it was because I want to take this candle home with me. Um, it is very similar to the blueberry spike pumpkin patch in that you do have a pretty strong blueberry pop tart kind of pop. Um, standing in for your blueberry and then you have a strong um, synthetic maple syrup fragrance note as well so it kind of feels like blueberry pop tart with like log cabin maple syrup you know like the really um, synthetic super sweet we're not talking premium grade a amber <laughs> Um, maple syrup here. We're talking about like the really more inexpensive but very recognizable, just kind of generic, almost candy-like maple syrup. No shade to anyone who loves this candle or who loves blueberry Pop-Tarts or log cabin maple syrup. I have indulged. Um, and so the candle is very authentic for that experience, but not authentic like in a fresh blueberry way or in a premium pure maple syrup kind of way. That's just not the candle that it is. We don't have to be highbrow, too highbrow to like appreciate this candle. I don't really do gourmands. And so for me, it's just a non-starter. Um, and I, I would not purchase this one, but I'm so jealous of all of you who love this candle because I do think this is the most stunning of the set of eight. And I think all of them are really lovely. Um, I suppose there will be people that don't like this aesthetic. Um, and God bless, like we all have our own personal preferences and our own design choices in our homes. 
But man, for me, I just think this is so precious. It warms my heart, this whole vintage woodland look. It's really, really nice. And how great is it that it's cheap? Okay, so let's move on to another one. Let's talk about one of the other new fragrances. So along with Praline Delight, we have a new fragrance and you may have seen it um, teased in various places. Gird your loins. Here is apricot and green fig. It is a lot to look at. So just go ahead and feast, feast your eyes. This is a, a really evocative package um, and an aggressively ugly color wax. So this is kind of, um, and for the most part, this picture is fairly true. It is kind of this yellow green, but it's super ugly. It's like a cross between like mustard and vomit and like baby poop, or I don't know what. It's aggressively ugly, um, but <laughs> because of the shocking nature of it, it really makes the um, design choice pop really beautifully where we have these dark green leaves, these pops of brown, it's muted, it's earthy. Weirdly, we don't have any picture here on the label of something like an apricot or a fig, which may be a very deliberate choice because folks, there is no fig and there is no apricot in this candle. And I'm so sad about it because as aggressively ugly as this wax is, I'm actually kind of obsessed with it now. Like I can't stop thinking about that candle and wishing that I had brought it home. Do you know, like a few years ago, all of the cool girls, they started walking around with these like pea coats that were kind of that color, you know? They were like mustard yellow, but like ugly mustard yellow. and. It's impressive because they could carry it off. I mean, if I wore a coat like that, everybody would just be like, why are you wearing a coat that looks like baby vomit, you know? And I would be like, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but it made me feel in my red coat like I was some sort of cliche, that I was predictable. Those girls look super cool. That color is like a super, super cool girl color. It is ugly, but... For some reason, it's so ugly that it's kind of stunning and beautiful at the same time. And it says fall in a way that sometimes all of the oranges and browns don't, if that makes sense. So that's just color. Then on top of it, if you've watched my channel, you know I love a fig candle. Oh my gosh, and that, that combination of apricot and fig, I was so looking forward to it. And I was hoping for something intriguing, bright, floral sweet but also dark and jammy and wood fall like maybe with a little bit of musk maybe with some other darker berries unfortunately does not deliver at all i smelled it and i thought to myself this is a spring and summer candle and i smelled it for so long and for a while i'm like i'm bringing it home and then at the end i just couldn't Friends, unfortunately, I report to you that the apricot and green fig candle is a coconut and sandalwood candle. I know, right? Coconut, sandalwood. The dominant note of that candle is coconut, and I don't believe it's even listed in the notes. Give me one second, because actually I need to check my notes about what those notes are. Okay, friends, forgive me. I, for some reason, I hadn't listed those notes in front of me and I needed to consult. Actually, coconut is in the list, which I had forgotten. So the scent notes are apricot, sandalwood, lush fig, and creamy coconut. And when I looked at the notes before I smelled it, I was actually even more intrigued because I do love coconut. But I assumed that it was just going to be a very supporting cast that you could barely tell but would provide some sort of nuttiness to it, some sort of exotic quality. No. My friends, scratch out the apricot, scratch out the fig. This is primarily coconut with a little bit of sandalwood. And I don't understand it. Like. Bath & Body Works has been giving us coconut sandalwood candles for like the last nine months. I'm not kidding you. And okay, I guess it hasn't been nine months, but okay, seven months, whatever it's, seven months, okay? I love coconut sandalwood. I go 
a long mile for coconut and sandalwood, but like we have had a steady diet of it. This is not a remarkable coconut sandalwood candle. Even if it were a remarkable coconut sandalwood candle, why are we getting it in August, September, October? Who is, even I am not burning a coconut and sandalwood candle in October. It is prime time. It is not coconut sandalwood season. And I am a seasonal burner. Like, no, absolutely not. It's just another one of their generic beachy kind of candles. There is something like fruity about it, actually like fresh, juicy, bright fruit about it. But it's very like vague and generic. It could be a kiwi. It could be pineapple. Like it is for sure not anything like apricot like. It's just kind of one of those like bright kind of acidic citrusy kind of fruits but not quite citrusy that kind of brightens up the fragrance a little bit but also makes it super beachy generic. I just, if you close your eyes and you smell that candle, it's a no. It's an absolute no for the season. And frankly, it's nothing to write home about just as a candle itself. Even if they were giving it to us in March or April or June or whatever else that it, it's just not, it's a no. And that package deserves better. We deserve better. I ended up not bringing that candle home. If you pick it up, you need to burn it now. <laughs> Burn it now, July, August, because guess what? It's a late summer fragrance, why not? I mean, you're on the beach and you do have kind of the transition of it being a little bit of a fall looking candle with the packaging. And to be honest, I am kicking myself a little bit for not having picked it up because I am one of those people that definitely burns beach stuff through August. And the other day I was like, I could use that apricot fig candle because I could burn a coconut sandalwood candle right now in July and I really liked that package. It would be kind of unique because it's like super fall-like, but it's also, surprise, <laughs> a generic beach scent. But I didn't pick it up because I think I was just so like taken aback and offended on principle that I just didn't bring it home close parentheses. Here's the candle again. Take a look, feast your eyes. This is a stunning candle, even though it's aggressively ugly. And if I had to, to do over, I probably would have brought it home. If you bring it home, burn it now. Who is going to be burning this in October? No one. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. It's a lot. Okay, let's move on to now a whole spate of pumpkinish candles that are very familiar to you and we're just gonna go through them super quickly so that you can see the new packaging. So we've got Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin. Here's Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin. It is this beautiful deep burnt red orange color. It's a really nice design, it's, it's good. You can see the cinnamon sticks. You've got this cream pumpkin that like matches with it really well, gives a little bit of a pop. You've got orange leaves and I believe which what are deep purple marigolds. Um, so yeah, it's a nice package. I like it. It's fine. Um, if you are familiar with the sweet cinnamon um, fragrance, it is mostly cinnamon. <laughs> Not a whole lot of pumpkin. It's a lot of cinnamon. It is just this side of red hot. But for me, it's just not for me. There's not a whole lot of pumpkin in it and it's just kind of like a flat cinnamon candle, although I'm grateful that it doesn't go in a red hot direction. It's kind of a very moderate experience on cold, so I don't think it's gonna be anything to write home about or a powerhouse, although please correct me if I'm wrong about that and you know better. Next candle is Pumpkin Snickerdoodle. Here's Pumpkin Snickerdoodle. It is a deep pumpkin orange. It's not my favorite of the designs, um, mainly because there's these weird flat cookies. They're the snickerdoodles over on the side, but they're just kind of strange looking because they don't automatically look like cookies. They kind of look like weird mushrooms or something. Anyway, they're cookies. Um, and the white pumpkin on this design is really stark, so it doesn't quite fit in with the rest of the design strategy, although there is this nice little baby acorn. Um, so yeah, 
that's pumpkin snickerdoodle. Doesn't need a whole lot of a description for me because you probably are all familiar with it. Not my candle, not a gourmand fan. Okay, and then we have pumpkin apple. And <laughs> pumpkin apple, <laughs> like, is it like leaves or like autumn? One of them, it's like, we've already got several out on the floor in various different formats. This will not be the last of them. And so just add it to the pile. Here is a pumpkin apple. Um, and it's, it's nice, but it's a deep cranberry color wax. And it needs, I think, a little bit of a lighter design to really like pop against the dark wax. Um, there are some white pumpkins there that are really welcome and some green leaves. It just needs, I think, a little bit more brightness than it has in this particular candle, but it's a fine design. Um, and then we have also pumpkin cupcake. So here's pumpkin cupcake. Um, and yeah, it looks really nice. It's... Um, just kind of this light, warm cinnamon color. You can see the cupcake, it's very discernible, it looks nice. Again, as with the pancakes, doesn't cheapen it. Um, yeah, it's you've got these rust colored leaves and flowers. It's a, it's a good, nice design. Um, many of you are familiar already with pumpkin cupcake, so I won't necessarily talk about it, but I will be comparing it in conjunction with Praline Delight, which we're gonna talk about now, because they are somewhat similar. So let's talk about Praline Delight. This is the one that I ended up bringing home over the apricot and fig one that I probably should have brought home. So. This is actually, I think, a gourmand. Truly, like, I can't pretend, as with Cozy Sunday Night, that there's something underneath it that may not be gourmand. With this one, I kind of felt as if there was something else. Um, and now that I'm smelling it, it could be a little bit of light amber, but I, as I said before, I think it might be like a, a woodiness, a wood nuance. This one is through and through you know, praline, toffee, caramel, but there's a deepness to it and a nuttiness about it. It is a vague kind of nuttiness. So I don't know that I'm necessarily picking out pecans over like other nuts. Oh, and I should show you the lovely design. You know, we've been talking about it, but it's this really rich dark brown and it pops enough. I would like it to pop a little bit more, but obviously you've got some nuts, you've got a mushroom, you've got some like maybe eucalyptus leaves, although there's no eucalyptus in this particular fragrance. Very woodland, I like it. Um, I am a little bit worried about the dark wax because Ken from Candle Channel says that with dark wax, it will like choke the wicks a little bit and sometimes that's a harbinger of like wick issues later on. So I'm hoping that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, it's just really rich and caramely and nutty <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> There are certain nuts that I just don't consider to be like gourmand. For instance, hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans, almonds, pistachios. I love candles with those in them, depending upon what they're mixed with. So if it's like pistachio and like icing, like I don't want a cupcake, I don't know, even if it has no bakery note. But like, especially if the nut is mixed with something that's a little bit not gourmand, I'll do it. Peanuts, no. Peanut butter, absolutely not, you know? And if it's mixed with something bakery, forget it. This is mixed with a warm caramel. It's the warm caramel of like um, Sol de Janeiro or something like that. Ah, and it's just close enough to that genre for me to be like, okay, I'll burn it. Not quite my wheelhouse, but I'll go with it. This is a little bit on the moderate side, but it's deep and roasty and caramely, and I don't mind it. Um, and I think it might be a very good blending candle. This is definitely a mid-range candle, maybe mid to base. Um, I would like it to have a few more base notes in it, um, just a little bit deeper. And if they were a little less gourmand, I would love that. Like a little bit of wood, a little bit of musk, a little bit of something, I don't know what. This one actually goes super well with Cozy Sunday Night. Cozy Sunday Night is a higher to mid-range candle because of the really bright spices. Yeah, man, this is sharp. Gosh, it's nice. Really, really bright spices on this one, but it's kind of the same genre in that they're both kind of this like warm, toasty, roasty brown <laughs> kind of 
feel and smell. They smell brown. Um, <laughs> they just work really well together. And between the two of them, they kind of go mid to base range. So I like all of them together. Because though this is very similar to a few of the candles that are on the floor set right now, I went ahead and compared them. So I'm gonna give you a picture right now. This is a picture of the three that I wanna talk about, which is the Praline um, Delight, along with Pumpkin Cinnamon Bun, and also Pumpkin Cupcake. Because I think that these three are actually similar. So smelling them together, um, the boldest one was definitely pumpkin Cinnabon, which probably is not um, a surprise to many of you. Pumpkin Cinnabon was super bold, came out of the jar, um, and it, to me, smelled like actually Cinnabon roll dough. So less like a baked um, cinnamon roll as like cinnamon roll dough and a very thick icing smell. Um, it's by far the boldest of the three. Um, pumpkin cupcake has a very strong icing component as well, but instead of going with the cinnamon and the dough, it goes fruity. And for me, not pumpkin-y. It goes actually maybe a little bit apple and pear-like. Um, there is something, it doesn't have a bakery note to it. So it's, it, it doesn't have like the crumbs or the dough or anything like that. It just kind of has, the spices that are associated with like an apple pie, for instance, with a lot of icing. <laughs> but you wouldn't have an apple pie with icing, so that's why they're calling it like a pumpkin cupcake. But for me, more apple pear-like, more fruity and juicy than it is like mellow, um, like a squash or a pumpkin. But it does have the icing. Um, this one doesn't have the icing in it, but it has many of the same like spices and it has like a very roasty, like kind of gourmand um, feel. It's very similar. It could be similar to like the, the filling of like a Cinnabon or something like that. But it just has, it's a little deeper and richer and it has like a little bit of a vague nuttiness about it. Like a praline roll or something like that, minus the dough. If it had had a dough situation, I would have been out. That's, that's it. I'm, it's a no for me after that. <laughs> So, my friends, I knew that was a long. Those are the eight candles that are coming out. The new ones are Praline Delight, which is not breaking the mold or reinventing the wheel, um, but is very nice, and I think a lot of people will like it, and it'll be a great mixer, blender for your fall season, no matter what fall candle you're burning. Also, Apricot and Green Fig, which was just an amazing disappointment. Um, maybe I'm missmelling. Maybe, maybe this is not what it is. I, I eagerly expect and anticipate all of the reviews to come in and, and I will stand corrected if I'm missing something there that I, that I should be getting. Um, but if you want that one, definitely burn it for August because it's a beach burn <laughs> with a, a very, um, provocative fall design and aesthetic. It's a choice and it's a decision. My friends, that's what I've got for you. $24.95 for all of these. And just to reiterate, I love this aesthetic. It's beautiful. And I don't mind spending a couple extra, couple less dollars too. So I like the colored wax. My friends, that's what's coming out either in August or in a week. So check them out at your local Bath & Body Works. I would link them below, but not on the website yet. Just take a look. Thank you for joining me for these three videos. Um, I will see you guys in the next one.